Do we know who in the regiment made it? Here you go. Okay, here's Frederick, near Washington, D.C. Yep. He made it. Mm-hmm. Please. I'm, I'm really curious about what comes next. There's two more years of war to go. You know, I'm just sort of praying that all three of the brothers survive this. So I did a little digging, and what I found was this newspaper article. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. This is the National Defender, Brookville, Indiana, Friday, May 6th, 1864. Oh, uh, this is the following year. Yeah. So we're almost a year, about nine months okay. after Vicksburg. And it's being published. Being published in Indiana. Back home. Right. Declaration of Principles by the 83rd Indiana Regiment. We the commissioned, non-commissioned officers and privates of the 83rd Regiment of Indiana Volunteers do declare and say, we are not unmindful of the approaching civil struggle which shall take place in our beloved state and union in October and November next year, which I guess refers to an election. Mm -hmm. And 64, of course, I mean, this is the big presidential election. And the Democrats have put forward this candidate who's a former Union general, George McClellan, and a real kind of compromise ticket, a peace ticket. Where's McClellan on, on slavery? He's not keen on emancipation. If we'll just focus on the Union, right. we could win this thing. Right, but it's, now too, it's, it's too radical. Don't, mm -hmm. don't do this now. We've exactly. got a, a country falling apart. And emancipation had been really controversial. If you look at Lincoln's letters at this point in the spring of 64, doesn't he, he, he doesn't think he's going to win. OK. Under the uh, state constitution that is, as it now exists, we are not allowed to vote in the field. I love these guys. It is to marvel that the majority of the body, we're talking about the Indiana legislature, mm -hmm. and whose proclivities in favor of a recognition of the Southern Confederacy are so well known. And so the legislature seems to be sympathetic uh, to the Confederates. That's certainly what the 83rd is arguing. So are, are they saying that the legislature is disenfranchising their votes? Exactly. Traditionally, you had to be home, go home to vote. Right. But we, we can't do that in 1864. So what are we going to do? Some state legislatures were allowing absentee voting. Indiana was one of the states that wow. chose not to. And so what they're saying is... We know I an election's have, coming yeah, up. Yeah, and I, I want to have a voice. Right. I love that there are cool? voting rights agitators. You know, this is a good one. Keep going. Okay. We believe that he who fights should vote, and he who votes should fight. Don't you love that? I agree. We're going to get you a T-shirt. I, <laughs> I agree. I keep running around saying voting's not enough. Yeah. And then we have signatures. I'm looking. Frederick New. He's now a, a sergeant, mm -hmm. which is above a corporal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of responsibility. Okay. But also, what's really cool is if you look at the number of guys, yeah. about 90% of the unit signed this petition. Yeah, that's amazing. Right. They seem to be pretty radically engaged on the right side of history here. What happens after that? Right. This book is going to tell you a little bit more about the unit's experiences. Okay. Fort Camp was broken the following morning. News was received of Lee's surrender. Wow. Which produced a sensation that cannot be described in words. A deafening roar of cheering started. Men climbed into the trees, yelled, hugged each other, rolled on the ground until worn out. What a moment. On the 29th of April, the whole army broke camp for its last march to Washington and prepared for the Grand Review, which took place May 24th of Grant's and Sherman's victory armies, right. victorious so, armies. Yeah, this is the end. It's over. Right. Grant and Sherman's armies get to do this victory parade through Washington. Wow. Right, but Lincoln was just assassinated. Right. You know, as one of the witnesses of the... Of the Grand Review noted, I mean, they're cheering, and yet at the same time, she said, you know, I feel like weeping. It's, it's been an incredible cost. Right, right. Do we know who in the regiment made it? Here you go. Okay, here's Frederick, near Washington, D.C. Yep. He made it. 
Mm-hmm. Please. Okay, John made it. Please. Yay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Valentine made it. They made it. They made it. Go, Indiana. Yeah. So what happens next? I'm sure they're facing the kind of difficulties that our soldiers today face yeah. when they leave conflicts and come home. Oh, absolutely. At least they have each other. They do. And it's hard to get at what happens when they get home. But one of the best ways to unravel some of that, at least, is veteran soldiers' pension records. If I find anything, okay. I'll go ahead and send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. Yeah, sure. It's amazing to me that Frederick, my great-great-grandfather, signs to this letter, which is fighting voter disenfranchisement in his home state which is just funny to me because the thing that I am most concerned about is voter disenfranchisement in my home state of Wisconsin. The main takeaway, though, is obviously that these three brothers survived this. But even though they've sort of won the lottery, I want to find out what their life was like after this.